Welcome to Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. And in this episode of Why People Get Out of Prison and Go Back to the Criminal Lifestyle, we're going to be talking about undiagnosed mental illnesses, right? Undiagnosed mental illnesses. Now, let me make sure that everybody understands off the top that I'm not a psychiatrist, psychologist, or a therapist. I don't play one on TV. And I'm most definitely not trying to put myself off as being somebody like this on this show. I'm giving you what I believe, based on my experience in here, the time that I've been here, over 30 plus years, is what I see. I've seen a lot of people in here that have a lot of problems, a lot of problems. And when I talk about problems, mental, Ill, mental, mental health issues, I'm talking about anxiety, depression, uh, antisocial behavior, uh, schizophrenia, paranoia, PTSD. And that, when I say that, I'm talking about me too. So when I say that, I'm talking about me too, because I believe that I'm one of those individuals that was uh, undiagnosed for PTSD, something that happened to me as a child when my mother uh, was killed uh, as a child. I didn't know how to cope with that, uh, but I'm not going to get into that right now. You know, I wrote a book about it. You can check that out. It's called Becoming a Murderer, How PTSD Influenced My Decisions. It's available on my son's website, jtb3.org. Go check that out, and I think that it'll give you a a little insight into what I'm talking about, you know what I'm saying, about myself. But let me get back to what I'm talking about as a whole. You know, a lot of people in here have a lot of issues. And when you're out there on the streets, you know what I'm saying, people, it's, it's, it's easy to identify that individual. When you get put in here, it's like you are in a crowd of people that have the same problem. And in here, we all just cope with it and we act out, though. We act out, but how do we act out? We act out by fighting. We act out by using drugs. We act out by all these behaviors that people say that is what happens in prison. No, that don't even make sense. How does it make sense to, that this type of behavior is acceptable and nobody's bothering to say, well, why are they doing these things? Why are they acting out like this? And it's something that people need to understand. I'm not saying that everybody in prison has a mental issue when they get here, right? But what I am going to say, what I am going to say, and I'm going to be talking about this in another show, so y'all keep on listening and checking it out, right? But what I am going to say is the trauma that is caused to a person when you first get locked up changes you. It changes you. It does something to you. So when you get put in a place like this and you suffer that trauma, you're not knowing how to cope, Something is changing in your head. Something's going on. Like I say, I'm not a doctor, so I can't get specific with it, right? But I'm sure there's some people way smarter than me that knows what's going on. And then when the sentence is up, these people, my people, people like me, you feel what I'm saying? Get out of prison. What do we do? We try to function out there with the issues that we have that we have not dealt with, right? And we end up going back to the same old trash the same old garbage life that's put us in prison in the first place we go back to it why because we keep functioning through that broken filter that is set up around the mental issues that we're dealing with and nobody wants to deal with that now i take i say this you know the mental issues that we do have in here we don't want to go and seek help a lot of time and that's on us that's on us i'll, I'll say that but we have a good reason. I know for me, I'm afraid that if I go talk to uh, somebody here, uh, that that information about me will get out. I hear about other people's issues that's going on when they go, you know, talking to doctors and all this. And, that. and again, I can't pinpoint how it gets out. I don't know if somebody is saying this or somebody overhears that or whatever the case may be. But I can tell you pretty much. Uh, I, I bet you I can name 10 people on the compound, on any compound that I've been on, they got mental issues, and there ain't no reason for me. Ain't, I ain't got no business knowing that. But I do know that a lot of people in prison, I've talked to a lot of people, they don't want to seek help because they don't want everybody to know their business. Because if people in here know your vulnerabilities, you, be, you can become a target. So we rather just self-medicate, get high, smoke weed, use other kind of drugs to deal with what's going on in our heads. We act out in violent ways trying to deal with it because we don't know how to, uh, what do I say? We don't know how to cope in groups. We don't know how to deal with people. We have these antisocial 
uh, ways of going about life in here. We think that everybody else is crazy, but we're the ones that got the issues. So that's why we do a lot of fighting. We set these rules of structure of how we're supposed to live in here based on this, this warped way of thinking because of the mental issues that we're suffering. We set these ways up that we have to live and they, they don't make sense. And nobody ever questions that. All people say is, that's prison. That's what goes on in prison. Well, let me tell you something. That don't even make sense to accept that people in prison are going to be fighting, raping each other, robbing each other, and then nobody does nothing. The only thing they say is, that's prison. It's got to be a better way. It's got to be a better way. None of this makes sense. And it amazes me that all of these smart people that put this system together, that oversee this system, have not figured out that these people have mental illness. Now, I'm going to say this. I, I believe some people do know. I believe some people do know that a lot of us have mental issues, right? But either they don't care or they just don't know what to do. It might be too big of a problem to solve, so they just manage it while we're here and then manage it as best they can out there, like on probation and parole, just waiting on the day for us to come back. Because we're coming back in droves, depending on what state you're in, it's anywhere from 49 to 69 percent recidivism. That is unacceptable. Any corporation running on those numbers, that's failure. It's unacceptable because we are not addressing the issues that are causing the problem. We have this fantasy going on saying, well, if they just get a job, teach them how to fill out resumes and all of these things, they'll be just fine. Well, guess what? If I don't deal with the mental issues I got, you can take me and put me on Wall Street, give me a million dollar a year job, but I'm going to mess that job up because I still don't know how to cope when stress levels get too high. I still don't know how to cope because of whatever's going on in my head. Whatever triggers me, now I'm back in, the, I'm back in the, at that zone and something needs to be done about that. <laughs> you can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. You know what I'm saying? We can dress it up all we want to. We can talk about all the classes that we provide and we give, but we're not dealing with the mental issues. We're not dealing with the mental issues, people, and we need to do better with that. We need, we got to do. It's, it's, it's really not an option. It's really not an option. If we want our communities to be safer, building more prisons is not going to do it. If we want our communities to be safer, tougher laws making the sentences 100% is not going to do it. It's not going to solve the problem. The question is, do we want our communities to be safer? Do we want the people in prison to get out of prison and be better people, better versions of themselves, positive, productive citizens that contribute to the community and society at large? Do we want that? Or do we want the system to stay set up for failure? That's the question that you need to ask yourself. That's the question that you need to ask yourself. This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and peace.